Often a manufacturer will take one of their little hatchbacks and turn it into a bit of a sedan. This offers a little more practicality, a little more space for those that need just that little bit more. Now with Suzuki, they've taken the Swift and they've done exactly the same with the Desire. Up front, it's still Swift. At the back, well, that's the bone of contention. Now we've got to ask, what do actual Suzuki Swift fans think of this? <laughs> okay, Chelsea, you know Suzuki's. You know the Swift, you know it quite well. You're actually chairperson of the Swift Club. What are your thoughts on the desire, just straight off the bat? Okay, well, I'll admit, I mean, in terms of my taste, it's not the prettiest looking car, but it definitely has its uses. Um, the Swift does have a very small boot, and there's no denying that the desire definitely has a lot more space for all your junk, you know, in that trunk. So that's fantastic. Uh, fuel economy is great and that is very appealing um, so yeah I mean it's I'm glad to see the desire because at least that means for the Swift Club we can at least have more Swifts so that's awesome okay uh, Chelsea who do you think would be the target audience for a car like the desire I would say your young families uh, definitely um, you know those with like one or two kids maybe small kids Definitely a lot of space in the car, like I'm saying. Very safe, reliable, fuel, uh, fuel efficient. Um, so for those that are obviously on a budget, that need a safe, reliable car that will get them from A to B, that carries everything that they need. So yeah, and I mean, it does have all the nice features as well. The front is pretty attractive, I must admit. I mean, I like what they've done now. with The, the, chrome, the chrome bits and the headlights and all that looks good. The blackout lights, I mean, that is very nice. I mean, there have been a few members that have said, oh, okay, uh, the lights are quite nice. Let's try and put them on these cars, on the, on the 1.4s. So, I mean, that, that's really cool. I don't remember it looking like that. All right, now we're going to ask Ruan, who's also a Swift owner, what he thinks of the sedan desire. Ruan... What's your initial impression on this car? It's a bit of an odd shape, I have to say. It's because it has the squashed boot, so a bit of a stretched out Swift there. Um, overall, I think it's a nice practical design for the market, and it's obviously been designed for a particular market in mind. And yeah, I think she'll do well in the SA market. Now, if you had to be brutally honest about, you're a Swift owner, if you had to be brutally honest about your Swift, what are some of the shortcomings? What are some of the things that you say, oh, that could be better on my car? Uh, on my car, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. I'd like a little bit more uh, interior accessories, etc. But otherwise, overall, I'm quite happy. Okay, well now the Desire comes out with the Bluetooth and that now is standard. And they've of course updated the interior. So gone is the beige and it's now a black interior. So it's much better. Is that the sort of thing that you're looking for from a car? Definitely. If I even look at the other Japanese manufacturers who have gone the same route, introducing the same style design, also with the uh, cream interior, Definitely not something that attracts me. I prefer either a darker interior, dark grey, or a two-tone grey. Because it does become very impractical. We're kind of active. It's dusty out here. We're going to climb into the car. You don't want to climb into a light interior, do you? 100%. You've got it on the head there. Right, so we don't love the way that it looks. But that's only around the back because the front end actually looks very good. Quite like the look of the front end. They've updated the grill and the lower bumper, so there's a couple of chrome trims in there, and that looks really, really good. Then the headlights have been changed as well and they've got the black housing and in fact some of those fans even said that they'd like to transplant these onto their older generation Swifts. It's around the back where things get messy, it does look a little stumpy, it looks a little bit like a reverse pug, a bit of a squashed up nose, or in this case a squashed up bum. Now you can't expect rocket ship performance from this little motor, it's a little 4 cylinder 1.2 litre makes 63 kilowatts and 130 newton meters of torque. It is a little sluggish but it is wonderfully fuel efficient. Now Suzuki quotes 6.8 and they're one of the few manufacturers that actually get it spot on. We're sitting here and we're running about 6.8 as well. 6.8, 6.9. So very, very fuel efficient. 42 litre tank will get you so far. Now you get 152 litres in the Suzuki Swift hatch. In the sedan you're going to get 264 litres of boot space. Now you can bump the hatch up to 744 but that means folding down the rear seats. That's no good if you're trying to cart people around. So if you've got youngsters and you want to pop them in the back, perfect, the sedan's your option. The minor changes to the design don't only cover the front end of this vehicle, 
It also covers the interior. Now, the old design had a beige, a very light interior, and it didn't go down too well. So they've made it black, and we've got some brushed aluminium inserts here. It's a little dark, but it's really a great place to spend some time. Interior space is also very good. Even at the back, you can seat four adults in here quite comfortably. You can get yourself a 1.2 litre Suzuki Swift Desire GL for 143,900. In exchange for that, you're gonna be getting a car that drives really well, is extremely efficient, is actually quite practical, and gives you peace of mind. It's got a five star Euro NCAP rating and a two year 30,000 kilometer service plan on top of the warranty. And that should give you many years of trouble-free motoring.